Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about 10 things nobody told you about playing Rec Room. From kids being toxic to the expensive clothing purchases you will end up making in the game. So pull up a chair and let's get started. Number 1. It's not just kids that play Rec Room. When you first turn on Rec Room and start playing, to the untrained eye it appears that it is completely overrun by kids. They appear to infiltrate every rec center and hangout room in droves. However, the longer you play the game, the more you'll actually come to realize that people of all ages enjoy Rec Room and the adults can be just as addicted to it. You'll see 13 year olds and 30 year olds coinciding and getting along, helping each other on a quest or teaming up to build a map together. Number two, toxic kids are really toxic. While most people who play Rec Room are civilized, nobody tells you about the ones who were raised by the internet and roam across the land making their life mission to disrupt the peace. When you play this game, you'll occasionally have someone run up to you and insult you to your face with some very colorful language. You'll hear slurs and insults you thought were outdated and some new ones that cause you to cringe and make the yeesh face. I must say, despite the fact that these people are small in numbers, they can quickly ruin the mood in a public lobby. If you have a kid who plays Rec Room, can you please have a little chat with them to make sure that your precious little Timmy isn't being a disruptive troll. Thank you. And if you're an adult who exhibits this kind of behavior, then I, I don't even have any words for that. Number three. People are obsessed with Rec Room YouTubers. Until I became a RecTuber and figured out who Harry Manlegs and Boathia were, I had no idea how famous RecTubers were in this community. It turns out the answer is very. They are talked about constantly. People recreate their outfits and impersonate them. When they're online, people spam invite them until their fingers are tired from mashing the invite button. If a player appears in a live stream, they brag about it for weeks. If you could get autographs in Rec Room, fans would collect those too. You can't, so the Rec Room version is to take a photo instead. Nothing is more sought after than a photo of you with your favorite RecTuber to cherish forever, or at least until you get bored and start looking for the next one to meet. Number four, gifting people is a really big thing in the game. You may have heard about in-game purchases before, but Rec Room takes this to a whole new level. People are purchasing tokens, the game's currency, by the millions every day and spending it on elite clothing items, consumables like lattes and pizzas, and gifts. You can gift people a two, three, or four star random box. You can gift them from a free machine in the rec center. You can even pick items to gift from someone's wish list. Gifting is huge. You can customize the gift box with a message, so people love sending films since it's cheap just to convey a joke or a question. Number five, you can make a living from Rec Room. I bet you wouldn't think that you can make a full-time living from a video game, but this is 2022. Well, it will be in a couple days. And Rec Room is no stranger to creating careers aimed at the virtual world we are already immersed in. If you make maps in the game that are popular, you can rake in some serious tokens and that now translates into real life money. The top creators are making a substantial amount from collaborating with other top creators and forming dream teams. Rec Room even goes a step further, making content Contests many times a year to reward the best map designs. Even someone like myself that makes videos about the game can make money in multiple ways. There's the obvious ad revenue from YouTube, but now Rec Room has launched a video partner program where qualifying social media creators can gain supporters in game. For every supporter that makes a purchase, Rec Room pays out the content creator. This doesn't cost the supporter anything, but encourages more people to stay loyal to making promotional content. Number six, you will have more questions than answers about Rec Room lore. Who is Coach, really? What's the story behind 1987 being plastered on everything? What's with the Forbidden One? Nobody told you how confusing Rec Room lore would be. You will toss and turn at night, wondering the answer to various questions, while the developers chuckle behind the scenes, providing zero response. I'm pretty sure, if anything, they find new ways to create mystery and revel in our confusion as we try to piece it together like a puzzle from a garage sale that's missing half the pieces. Rec Room lore is like the last three seasons of Lost. It gets more and more chaotic until you finally give up and accept that there will never be any clarification. Number seven, you will have strong opinions on Rec Room issues. Nobody told you how opinionated you'd become about things you had no idea existed before you played the game. Voice moderation, the junior accounts that troll people with their friendly fire, the features that need to be added. You will discuss at length with your friends about how they need to add a certain type of clothing or hairstyle or new Rec Room original. You'll whine about how there's been no new quest released for far too long. And you'll know what someone means when they say the weekly is a letdown. Once you become a Rec Room addict, I promise you will be surprised by the the number of things that you feel personally attacked about. Number eight, clothing items can set you back a lot of money. Factoring in an additional point to the gifting topic is that items can be quite expensive in Rec Room. Some random unicorn horn will set you back over 12,000 tokens, which is around $20 US. Yes, you heard that right, a unicorn horn. There are many items that cost around the same amount and people happily buy them every day or gift them to friends. There should be no wonder why Rec Room is so profitable as they have seemingly cracked the code of success with this one. Keep making rare, expensive, limited time items and selectively releasing them 
around the hungry mass of players who are desperate for an elite five-star item to wear and brag about. Either we're all a bunch of suckers, or we love the game too much to even find fault with our logic of needing these superfluous fashion choices. Number 9. You will tap into your inner creative side. Whether you get hooked on building maps or you keep customizing your outfits, you will tap into that relaxed, imaginative side of yourself. I promise you'll be surprised at some of the innovative things you end up creating. Number 10. You will be hooked from day one. Once you make a couple friends, create your first outfit, win at paintball, and start doing the weekly challenges, you will find yourself hooked on this game. I bet nobody could have told you how addicting it is to spend time in Rec Room. It's like its own little world filled with infinite possibilities. Every match of Rec Royale is different. Every quest run presents its own challenges. Every time you take off your VR headset, you'll certainly be wondering when you can put it back on and get back to playing. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to smash that subscribe button and check out some more of my Rec Room content here. I upload new videos twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays, and I livestream Saturdays at 10am Pacific Time. Take care everyone, we'll see you next time!